Welcome back. Today I thought I'd do something different and create a tier list of all the Space Marine Legions within Warhammer 40k, based on my personal preference. Uh, a preface to this is that while I have been playing competitive 40k for the past three or four years, I'm by no means an expert in it and even then my view of competitive 40k and my experience is probably going to be confined to mainly the Australian and the uh, UK meta, so there may be some uh, ideas which don't really translate to the US or Canadian meta as well. In addition, we'll be ranking each Space Marine Legion on a couple factors. Firstly, competitive play, how well they've done historically in the game, as long as I've played it at least. And secondly, kind of based on their lore. Thirdly, just their general aesthetic and how much I like them. I suppose to start with, we'll go with the Dark Angels. We'll begin with Legion number one. Dark Angels competitively have been pretty decent for as long as I've played. Uh, now, they're actually quite... Well, they're in a strange spot now because of the sort of new rules update has come to them. They've really just sort of been pushed down a lot. Of course, they've recently got the Lion model, which has pushed them, you know, kind of up in their playability along with a huge new influx of models. Uh, historically, over the last few years, they've been kind of up and down. In 9th and I think 8th, they were really quite good, especially with their Deathwing and Ravenwing units. They were really quite good in that, but they were more or less tied to the Firstborn units. Uh, in addition, while there are a significant amount of Dark Angels players competitively, uh, usually I feel like, especially in 9th, their lists were very kind of mono-listed in and around, like I said, the Deathwing and Ravenwing units. Uh, nowadays, they're still pretty widely played, especially with those new units I was talking about, but it does kind of seem like they've sort of fallen out of favour competitively. In terms of their lore, they're they're pretty interesting. I do like their kind of almost Arthurian knight aesthetic, and I'm not a big fan of the green color scheme, all things considered. But the ideas around like their secrecy and how like paranoid and delusional they are—that's honestly pretty interesting. Um, the lion himself is kind of. He's a bit iffy for me. I've never really been that much of a big fan of him. He's always just been kind of forgettable, in my opinion. In that case, I'll probably have to put the Dark Angels. Uh, I'm. I am. Teetering between A and B. I think just based on how good they were with Ravenwing and Deathwing, I kind of have to put them on A. Right, uh, just pick one at random then. Next, I would say we should pick. Uh, next up, I suppose we can go for Black Legion and, I guess, slash Sons of Horus. Competitively, Black Legion are obviously the most preeminent CSM faction. I mean, they have Abaddon, who is one of the most busted characters imaginable. As a result, though, Black Legion are pretty much the only really competitively played CSM faction. You saw, I think, Word Bearers a fair bit in 9th. Uh, in addition to Black Legion, but just because of how good Abaddon is, I think Black Legion kind of trumps kind of everything else that's in there. Of course, nowadays, uh, World Leaders and Death Guard and Thousand Sons were split into their sort of own respective codexes, but for a while, uh, back in 8th and 9th when I used to play CSM World Leaders, it was really just a challenge because of how much better Black Legion were. I mean, like, e even to this day, they're the, I think, the most played CSM faction, and I think just by that logic and how good their units are, I really can't put them any lower than like A. Uh, in terms of their lore, the Sons of Horus, I thought as a legion they were pretty good. I especially liked kind of their the ideas around Horus and the Morn of All, but the legion itself was a little bit bland. The characters in there were, you know, pretty fun. You know, Loken, Abaddon, uh, etc. But I think just as a legion, I suppose their kind of growth from the Lunar Wolves to Sons of Horus to Black Legion is pretty interesting. I, the kind of books and around Abaddon, what he did in the Eye of Terror and his sort of consolidation of the traitor forces is, uh, it's pretty interesting and I definitely think it's one of the better sort of pieces of lore. A lot of people like to drag on Abaddon, especially earlier where just 
being a failure. But I think when you really sort of get down into his lore, he is much more of an interesting character and much more kind of three-dimensional than a lot of people give him credit for. He's not just like a bland villain that's two-dimensional. Uh, like I said mm, before, we're also going to be ranking them based on the general aesthetic. In terms of Black Legion, I'm not the biggest fan of modern CSM models. I don't really like the excessive trim on their armor. I'm, I'm not a big fan of modern Chaos models in general. Or a lot of modern uh, 40k models, they tend to go overboard on the trim. That's one of the reasons I really don't like the sort of new uh, Gilliman model that came out a few years ago. I say a few years ago, this is quite a bit back. Uh, in terms of their aesthetic, I guess they're alright. I'm probably letting my bias against like CSM models designs get to me. Just Overall, I really don't think I can put them any lower than S, honestly, just because of how, like, how ubiquitous they are in the meta, especially, like, in 9th with how good Chaos was. Okay, yeah, we're gonna put them in S. Next, I suppose we can go for... I guess we can go Salamanders. Salamanders, I remember in 9th being pretty well loved, though not really as ubiquitous as something like Ultramarines or Blood Angels. They were really good, especially because they had uh, Eradicators and Flamestorm Aggressors. Those was, those are both pretty well loved units in 9th, and Salamander's bonus to sort of flame weaponry really helped them out there. They're not as well played in 10th, to my knowledge. Uh, a lot of the time, from my memory, people used to play salamanders as a successor faction or a successor chapter rather and they just sort of give them i think it w what was it like stealthy and master artisan or something and they used to just run them like that trying to get the benefit out of the eradicators they're still a pretty good legion they have uh, fairly good characters in modern 40k i just don't see them played a lot in 10th edition in any of the really sort of like really any in any of the tournaments i've been to recently like i said they were pretty popular in ninth but they seem to have kind of fallen out of favor in terms of their lore I, I do quite like the sort of fire blacksmithing aesthetic i'm i that's probably one of my favorite things about them the sort of ideas around their craftsmanship and their blacksmithing and the ideas around creation just the kind of dichotomy of them being like these charcoal skin ginormous brutes yet them being like especially caring for imperial citizens and devoted to craftsmanship i do think that's pretty interesting as a concept in terms of their design and their aesthetic i do like when you see a lot of their minis like adrax agatone the ad with the kind of um dragon skin theme or the like mantles of drake skin i think that's a really cool aesthetic which i wish they'd play into more uh their general color scheme i'm not a big fan of i don't really like the kind of foresty green color that they have going on with dark angels i'm not a big fan of their green either but you can sort of paint them to such a degree that the darkness of the green kind of obscures it but with salamanders it's the color green doesn't really work on them it's almost like it's sort of too light to be one shade and not dark enough to be another if that kind of makes sense some of them especially when people paint them with like a very grim dark aesthetic it can look good but just generally i'm not a big fan of them competitively uh i guess i'll have to put them in I suppose B. They're very middle of the road, especially nowadays. Next, I can suppose we can do... Uh, let's do Death Guard. Death Guard, for a long time, were really, like, the boogie men of, like, I suppose 8th and 9th, or late 8th and 9th. They were just... Ex they were powerful beyond belief. I got, I got tabled so many times when I used to play uh, CSM World Leaders at tournaments back in 9th by Death Guard armies. They were really, really good. I think probably they're... Well, what was it? Their, uh, their, god, what was the unit called? They were like Plague Burst Crawlers, their tanks, they're, I think at that stage of the game, they were some of the best tanks in the game. Combine that with like Mortarian and just the, the durability of their units, it, it was just, it, it was hellish to play in that meta for a long time. Recently though, especially in 10th and I guess late 9th, they really have just fallen off. A lot of like, Codex Creepers really made the Death Guard kind of like bottoming in terms of like chaos units. They're trying to pull back now, but I, especially in kind of early 10th, they were really just kind of sidelined, which is I think really kind of disappointing because they do have a lot of 
very nice looking units and they're very interesting as a faction. Um, aside from that, I think pre kind of Mortarian and pre that like big influx of Death Guard minis, they weren't the best of the considered. They were just kind of relegated to being another sub faction of CSM, much like World Eaters used to be. I, I honestly can't overlook how dominating they were in the meta for a long, long time, especially with Mortarian, so I don't think we're going to be able to put them any lower than A, but uh, recently, just because of how far they've fallen off, uh, I suppose I could still maybe sneak them into S. Uh, in terms of their design, I, I do really like their kind of like toxic industrial bioweapon like plague aesthetic. I'm not a big fan of Nurgle aesthetics in general, either in uh, Fantasy, Sigma, or in 40k, but the Death Guard are, are pretty interesting. I do like Mortarian's design, and his mini is amazing. Uh, just based on that, I'll probably put them in... There's a part of me that wants to spitefully just put them in D, just because of how badly they beat me in ninth, but I'll put them in S. That seems like what they would deserve. Uh, next up, let's do Space Wolves. Generally within Loyalist Space Marine Armies, there's sort of a trifecta of the melee factions that are played competitively, with them being kind of Blood Angels, White Scars, and Space Wolves. Uh, and they sort of each tend to like take over each other for the preeminent spot over time. Currently, I think just in the current meta, that would be Blood Angels. Uh, Space Wolves tend to be on the kind of bottom of that kind of like group for the most part they were pretty strong in uh i think eighth and ninth they were really quite good for a long time well not for a long time they were they have short bursts of being pretty good but uh blood angels and scars tend to have more stability in that but they're still a very serviceable melee army i've seen them being played pretty well in competitive spheres they don't have a great synergy with a lot of the units that are currently kind of in play, but they are, you know, pretty decently usable, and I've seen many people come close to winning tournaments with them. Uh, in terms of their aesthetic, I do really like their kind of Norse Viking aesthetic. I wish that Games Workshop would play more into that rather than just having them be wolf, 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 wolf. I think that really kind of like degrades where they are as a faction, just to kind of like relegate them to only being wolf references. Uh, aesthetically, I do kind of like their like, tribal aesthetic, especially around the lore of like differing space wolf tri or differing Fen differing Fenrisian tribes on Fe Fenris having sort of different uh, like aesthetics and roles. You know, the Iron tribes being with the space wolves recruit their tech priests or they give tech priests a different name, like Iron priests or something. Uh, also, the like kind of difference in their specific units, how they have. What was it like rune priests instead of psychers or librarians and wolf priests instead of um apothecaries i do think that's a cool kind of idea of having different friendly using tribe which kind of have different skills which you draw from kind of making the space wolves a coalition of tribes almost i do wish that they'd kind of play into that more in terms of their color scheme and their aesthetics i do think that their heresy color scheme was a lot better the sort of like dark grey and the reds and yellows. The modern Space Wolves aren't bad. I've seen a lot of people paint them up really well with sort of a more icy aesthetic with the sort of pale greyish blue that they have, but just generally because they weren't as stable as some of the other melee options, I'll probably have to put them in B tier. They're still very usable, but they're not the best. Uh, next up, I guess we can just do the other two marine melee armies. We'll do Blood Angels and White Scars. Uh, starting off with White Scars. White Scars are actually, I think they're one of the better melee armies, especially for marines. They can synergize really well with the like amount of bike units and like mounted units marines have, but especially currently with things like the, AT the Invader ATV, the Outrider squads, the Chaplain on bike. In ninth, they were actually very good. I remember uh, people used to run them a lot with, uh, what was it, the Chaplain on bike, like I said, the Primaris Chaplain on bike. They were really effective in that, especially with their kind of, what was it, their move in charge or their advance in charge rule. They were a very good melee army, which I think, for the majority of ninth, I think a lot of people played them as successor chapters, though, where they had white scars with 
It was Whirlwind of Rage and Hungry for Battle, I believe. That was, the, I suppose, the meta combo for White Scars at the time. I did see a fair number of people, though, playing them as just pure White Scars. I think that was a fairly common uh, sort of army at the time as well. In 10th, I feel like they've still kind of maintained their stability, unlike some of the other factions moving from 9th to 10th. They've really just sort of been able to take advantage of those kind of, um, with the new leadership systems around, like, uh, primaries chaplets on bikes and you know squads of outriders combined with invader ATVs and just having like sort of fast moving units and there if I if I wasn't playing world leaders as my main I would probably be maining white scars in all honesty I really do like their kind of like like the space was a kind of like tribal Mongolian aesthetic I really like their kind of white and red uh, color scheme that's probably my favorite combination of colors my world leaders army are painted up in like a mix of heresy style so they have like white and red and blue and red but I'm getting off topic in ineffectiveness they, they were never so dominant in the melee scene that they would like eclipse all of their options but they were a very solid like all not maybe not all around but they were a very solid melee army for the majority of 9th edition, and I think you could still, in effect, play them very similarly in 10th edition. Uh, in addition to that, I think Corsair Khan is a very... He's he's one of the better Marine Captain characters. You have, for like, each Legion, uh, you know, Blood Angels have Mephiston, uh, White Scars have Corsair Khan, Ultramarines have Kalgar, and then, uh, I, I guess, Tigarius. Uh, that kind of thing. I think Corsair Khan is one of the better ones out of those kind of lineup. He, he's not the best just because of how mounted the White Scars army is. He tends to lag behind. A lot of people I see use them just as sort of like something attached to assault intercessors now, just to give them that extra punch to move in. I see uh, White Scars being played a fair bit in tournaments with that kind of breakdown of just mass sort of bike cavalry supported with a few leaders and then just having Corsair Khan on the wings with his assault intercessors. I see that as being a fairly common play. Based on that, I'm probably going to have to put them into... Uh, I think I'm, we're, we're going to have to put them in A. I don't think they have the breadth of abilities to get them into S, but they're not like... They don't lack in anything to the point where they'd need to be dropped down to B. Alright, next to round out the melee armies, I guess we'll have to do Blood Angels. Blood Angels, Blood Angels, Blood Angels. Blood Angels were probably... Probably one of the factions I considered playing the most outside of World Leaders. But for the longest time, especially in 8th and 9th, they were really mono-listed. Especially with how good the Sanguinary Guard were. The Sanguinary Guard, I think, in 9th were probably one of the best melee units, especially that were available for Marines. But as a result of that, Blood Angels lists for the longest time were just kind of focused primarily on just getting as many Sanguinary Guard and, I guess, Death Company. Either Death Company or Jump Assault Pack uh, troops into the army. Which, as a result, just for me, it didn't really seem fun to play. It just sort of set, felt... I know, very curated. They've changed a lot in 10th, I think, and they're a little bit more open to different units being played now in terms of the meta. Uh, Sanguinary Guard have kind of fallen off in terms of their viability with more emphasis being placed on, I think, what was it, Jump Pack Intercessors and Assault Intercessors. They also got that, the new Dante model, which is pretty good. Um... Aesthetic-wise, I do really like the kind of red color scheme, the like almost Renaissance Catholicism vibe they have with the angels and the vampirism. Uh, I also really just like Baal as a sort of thematic environment, the sort of desert uh, radiation. It's just very thematically cool, I think, for the Blood Angels, this kind of pure angelic being to arise out of such a desolate wasteland. I mean, going back to how they were in 8th and 9th, they were very good, I just wasn't particularly fond of playing them, I think, just, they were very conflicted faction for me, because they have a lot of very nice units, which I like looking at, they're visually interesting, the Ball Predator, uh, you know, the Death Company, that's a really nice looking unit. I'm hesitating to put them in S tier just because of how finicky they can be with some of their units, like how 
how good the Sanguinary Guard can be, only for them to like fall off and completely shift the balance of the army. I think we're gonna have to put them in A tier for now. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure there'll be some Blood Angels fan who's gonna rave at me in the comments section about how this is stupid and I'm stupid for saying this, but that's where I'm gonna put them. Alright, next up I guess we'll go on to, I guess, Iron Warriors. I, I don't see Iron Warriors being played a lot in tournaments. I don't. I honestly don't see a lot of the non-Black uh, Legion -E CSM armies being played all that much, the most being maybe Empress Children. But for the most part, I don't really see them. I think just because of how preeminent the Black Legion are in the CSM meta, the, the other sort of Legions tend to just, just get overshadowed. Um, Iron Warriors, I would say they're, they're pretty good. They're alright competitively. Comparatively to, I guess, uh, Black Legion and Word Bearers, who are the, I, I guess, the best out of the CSM Codex, I'd say Iron Warriors are maybe the third best, so they're definitely not, like, unviable. You just don't really see them competitively because of how good the other two factions are. In, like I guess aesthetically, I do really like their kind of brutal industrialism to them. I think that's a really cool aesthetic. Uh, I suppose it's humorous just how much they hate demons and how much they abuse them. There's there's a lot of very opinionated Iron Hands fans as well as there are Imperial Fist fans who are I'm sure gonna put a death warrant out on me for saying this, but Iron Warriors there's just not a lot to say because of how little they played competitively. Uh. C tier. There you go. Okay, moving on to the other, the top, probably other top played CSM faction, Word Bearers. Word Bearers, I think, for a good period of time in ninth, you know, like eclipsed CSM, oh, uh, Black Legion in CSM rather, as the best faction. They were really good for a long time, especially with their Dark Apostles and just that unit was very good for Word Bearers. Aside from that, they've kind of been, aside from that kind of moment in the sun, rather, they've kind of been kind of jostling for second place in CSM with, with Black Legion because of how good Abaddon is. I, I think if you took Abaddon out of the Black Legion roster, they wouldn't be nearly as good as they are now. I mean, Word Bearers are pretty decent. I see them being played a fair bit now in CSM. Nowhere near as with the, how much they were in ninth, but they're still around somewhat. I mean, aesthetically, they, they don't really have a lot going for them. They're kind of a bit generic in terms of their sort of flavor, just being kind of a more fanatical variant of Chaos Space Marines. I do kind of like their almost Middle Eastern sort of early Near East religion vibe, especially with the runic writing on their face and the long strips of parchment. I think that's a very cool like addition to their armor. It really helps kind of differentiate them, I think, from the Black Legion, who are much more kind of, I don't want to say basic, but very much sort of like generically Chaos Space Marine. I think based on that, we're going to have to put them in struggling between A and B. I think just because of how much more usable they are than the other factions in the CSM Codex, we're going to have to probably put them in A. Alright, next up, Iron Hands, I guess. <laughs> Iron Hands, Iron Hands, Iron Hands. What do you say about the Iron Hands? The Iron Hands have broken the meta multiple times. They tend to come in, like, kind of at the 11th hour of any edition, and they just break the game. They did so on the... Uh, switching from 8th to 9th, they were a boogeyman in late 8th and early 9th. They did so around the tail end of 9th edition, they broke the game once again. Uh, I don't think they've really continued that into 10th edition, but I can remember in 9th, late 9th at least, they were really good. I think one of their main sort of tactics was, was it Drop Pod Devastators? That, I, I seem to remember that being fairly widely used, but yeah, they, they were... Almost ubiquitous to the point where I remember going to tournaments and then having people turn up with entire Imperial Fist armies only to tell me that these were just, oh no, these are Imperial Fist, or these are Iron Hands, but they're painted as Imperial Fists. Yeah, for the longest time, they they are just like, they tend to like have really short bursts of being absolutely utterly broken, but they don't really tend to like 
have any way to follow up on that. They are not very stable in terms of the meta, but rather they just kind of go from kind of mid-range to see uh, mid-range marines to being extremely high tier to kind of going back down to mid-range, which I think is one of their biggest faults. Is that they're not particularly stable and as such you can't really plan an army around that you just kind of have to go with the way the meta spikes which is which can be sort of difficult for certain people to play especially people who aren't at like an extremely high level of like competitive play where they dump and sell armies when the meta slightly changes in terms of their aesthetic i don't really find them all that interesting i guess the cybernetic element to them is quite uh cool but mm, just as a general faction, I find them just to be a little bit bland. There's not a hang of a lot of lore regarding them. That's one of the jokes because of how early Ferris Manus died and they just got shattered in Istvan 5. They don't really seem to do a hang of a lot. I think I think the biggest thing they did recently was they were... No, I'm thinking of something else. They were present at the fall of Cadia, but aside from that, I can't quite remember anything they've done recently. I mean, just based on their, like... On their like meta, like presence, I can't really put them any lower than A, I guess. But I don't really feel. Uh, I guess we can put them in S tier. S tier, I fear, I feel just based on how like, if you were to average out like their runtime or their sort of um the competitive like meta usage just the sheer like spike in usage would probably like mean that just by like the law of averages they're in around s tier i'd probably put them in the lowest point of s tier honestly if someone was to say to me that they were going to be in a tier instead i probably wouldn't disagree with that all right uh next up i guess we can do night lords night lords i see them being played a fair bit probably more than any other like non-meta faction of CSM, they're they're really quite. I think they're probably the second most like unique CSM faction, especially recently because they got the kill team upgrade sprue, which transforms the sort of regular CSM troops into Night Lords. Aesthetically, I think they're probably one of my favorites aside from World Eaters. Just like I just really enjoy their kind of like trophy idea, like they're kind of. Uh, gory trophy ideas, especially in around some of the heresy units, like the Night Lord's Contemptor that they used to have in Forge World, with the like, f the like dead corpse draped across it. I think was just like aesthetically, it was just really, really cool. Based on that, I can't put them any lower than B. I guess I can't put them any. I'm definitely not gonna put them in C because they are played a fair bit. I don't really see them getting to like extremely high levels in tournaments but i still see them around a fair enough bit that i think they can just be justified in going into, into b tier yeah i guess we can put them in b tier in terms of their units i see them they were used quite a lot with raptors i believe in ninth ninth and i think the lord discordant was pretty good for them as well other than that they was pretty well versed in just using basic csm units yeah, I think just putting them in B would probably make sense. They're very middle of the road uh, for just armors, I guess, but very kind of up there for CSM, I guess. Not as low as something like Alpha Legion or something. Alright, uh, next up we have the Ultramarines. <laughs> the Post-it Boys. Competitively, Ultramarines have always been very middle of the road for marines they've pretty much always just been as good as marines are in the meta which is generally pretty high ranking uh competitively i've seen them being used quite a lot especially in ninth edition they were very widely used uh they tend to make a really good use of a lot of marines units i remember when plasma inceptors were, were like busted in the meta they would have tons of them uh, the rules were also pretty decent, what with the rapid redeploy and was it the advance and shoot or the retreat and shoot? I can't quite remember. It's been a very long time since I've played Ultramarines as a faction. They also have Gilliman, which is a which up until very recently they had the only Primarch available. I think just based on that, they've always just been one of the better marine options. They've just been a very well-rounded 
unit that's always just been able to use something that's available in the marine kit. They pretty much have the ability to use almost anything that's available to marines and use it to a certain degree of effectiveness. Where unlike something like Blood Angels or White Scars, where you kind of really have to focus in on those melee powered units to the exclusion of shooting, with uh, Ultramarines you can kind of use everything to a sort of general effect. Lore wise, I think they're probably my second favorite. I just really like their kind of neo Roman aesthetic, with the ideas around sort of their having their own mini empire and Ultramar. And Gilliman's always a fun character, even if I'm not particularly the biggest fan of his recent mini. I think just based on that and really just how widely played and how effectively widely played they are, there's still plenty of Ultramarine players in the current meta. I probably have to put them in S. S tier. Right, so I guess next up we should be doing Raven Guard. Raven Guard are an army I don't really see being played competitively all that much. I still see them in smaller tournaments, but just as generally I don't particularly see them in bigger area tournaments, they tend to get knocked out fairly early. They're not a bad marine faction, they just tend to be a bit middle of the road, if a little bit underpowered. They do make pretty good use of some of the Primaris Vanguard units, like the Infiltrators and Cursors uh, Eliminators. They also have their what, unique captain in Shrike. But just generally, I don't really see them being played much. I think they were moderately popular in 9th edition, or maybe 8th. But back then, like a lot of the other ones, they were pretty much played mostly as a successor chapter. With, I think, a fair amount of people using them as just a basic Raven Guard. But for the majority of the time, I don't remember them being played all that much. They're not awful, but they're just not a particularly competitive pick. Uh... As a result, aesthetically, I, I do I do like them just because of their, I guess, the black armor and the, you know, spec ops tactical is a particularly, I guess, favorable or popular aesthetic. I'm just not that crazy about it. Uh, the white skin and the whole, like, raven ornaments, like, uh, sort of dark, gothic look to them is pretty enjoyable. I think just purely based on that, I have to give them a... C tier. They're not awful, but they're just not really that played. Alright. Next up, we have, you know, the, the, the golden child, my beloved world eaters. Right, yeah, uh, straight up, this is just going in S tier. I'm, I'm not taking any criticism on this. World eaters have always been my favorite faction, and at the risk of having this video end up being two and a half hours of me ranting about world eaters, I'll cut this short. Uh, but for the longest time, I played world eaters when they were wrapped up in CSM, and during that time, while I do enjoy the modern World Eaters units, I feel as though the variety that they provided in CSM was a lot better than what they have now. When they moved over to the new codex for World Eaters in 9th, or late 9th and early 10th, it was really restrictive in terms of the units that they could use. It ended up being very monolisted, with the pretty much only core units being 8-bound, Exalted and Normal, and Berserkers. Which I feel really, really detracted from what the World Leaders were as a Legion, especially in the pre-CSM days. I mean, I can't argue, because we have that awesome new model of Anger on, but... It really just does feel that they have been kind of degraded from what Games Workshop had. That being said, in the modern meta landscape, they really have changed. I remember prior to the new codex, there was a lot of focusing around on uh, just sort of infantry. I remember the basic CSM, like Chaos Space Marine units, were fairly often used, just along with the old style of Berserkers. I remember Raptors and uh, that being used quite frequently. The general play style of having, like, uh, kind of melee infantry in transports has, hasn't really changed. I remember the, the was it the Thermix pattern drill was fairly popular back in the day. But one thing which I do feel like which could be brought over from the earlier point of um, 9th edition and early 10th edition world leaders was there was a lot of focusing on like the allied units because I remember in I think early 10th or late 9th there was a lot of focusing around knights when knights were really really good and adding them onto world as units which provided them with a lot of like needed shooting but now the kind of focus in current meta is really more on 
uh, eight bound, exalted, and normal. Like I said, and the corn lord of skulls, which is not a unit that I'm particularly favorable of. I just don't particularly th feel as though it meshes well with the playstyle that world leaders wants. Just aesthetically, I also really just like the kind of kind of brutal utilitarian like. It's almost like a near industrial, very like bare bones, like not really caring about aesthetics. Ironically, for their like legion with the just like pure like white armor that's like sullied by blood the chain axes i just aesthetically really love them angron's probably not my favorite primark i find his character just to be interesting but i can't really like him i do just really like the world leaders though as a legion what they symbolize though based on that well i have to put them in s i'm a i'm a i'm a known world leader simp so i have to represent anyway Alright, next up, I think we should go Emperor's Children. Emperor's Children, like I said, with a lot of the CSM factions, they end up being really overshadowed by Black Legion, and Emperor's Children is one of the same. I see them played a fair bit, uh, just because of... I see them played a fair bit in non-tournament style games. But just because of like how little content they've gotten over the years, they're in dire need of a, a sort of a codex of their own, which I think would probably push them up to somewhere like B, maybe even A tier. But at this stage, since they don't really have anything particularly unique to them, they're forced to rely primarily on what exists in this in the Space Marine Codex, which isn't, which isn't particularly kind to them. The rules around like kind of their speed and attacks are pretty good, all things considered. But just generally because of how little content they have, even compared to someone like Iron Warriors and Night Lords, I think they're going to have to be relegated to C tier. Aesthetically, I suppose they're quite interesting, but just because of how much of them is kind of building up their foreshadowing of their fall to Slanesh, it almost feels as though they don't really get a chance to shine in the heresy. They kind of only exist as a kind of precursor to what they'd become in 40k and in 40k there's such little content around them that i can't really say all that much so yeah i, I guess empress children's gonna have to go into c tier all right next one is thousand sons this one's gonna be contentious but i think thousand sons has the most variance from what's gonna be going on in ninth and eighth to what's been going on in tenth mainly to do with the sort of change up between the psychic system from ninth and tenth they've always been fairly decently playable especially because they have magnus who's a very good model in demon primark they also focus very heavily on their infantry and just having like good like kind of leaders in their sorcerers like the ones on disc aramin and uh their scarab occult terminator captains and things like that which i feel really meshes with how 10th edition is played with these kind of like small groups well, not small groups but like units led by leaders which really meshes with how thousand sons want to play you know focusing around sorcerers and then combining them with infantry that and i feel like they get a good range of units to use in their codex they're not as restrictive as something like uh, world leaders which are really like bare bones in terms of the units they have but they're not as expensive as something like um a csm or death guard uh based on that i still i see thousands of being played quite a fair bit and they're certainly not like a downplayed faction mm. in terms of aesthetics as well i, I do kind of like the mystic zoroastrian like early egyptian vibe to them there's a lot of very like passionate thousand suns fans who will debate me to death about magnus being right or wrong but i think just based on all of that and a lot of the recent lore they've had is pretty good i think we're gonna have to put them in a tier for this point onwards okay second to last we have let's do alpha legion alpha legion i honestly don't see them being played at all i i think they're the army that i've seen play the least in terms of uh csm or just marine faction in general they're not a bad faction but they just really kind of lack in specific units and just in specific play style they're really like a lot of the factions from csm they're really overset or shattered by the other groups in there and to compound with that i just don't particularly find alpha legion lore interesting they i i just it's just there's just not a lot of it, and so much of it is wrapped up in kind of mystery. I do wish GW would play more into kind of like 
maybe like a mystery that could be pieced together rather than just kind of blatantly saying that this might be a lie or it might be true or it might be a lie or it might be true that kind of degrades i guess what the alpha legion are they're very memey though i do see them being played occasionally in like casual games most of the time if i do see someone with an alpha legion army nine times out of ten they're being run as black legion that have alpha legion uh that also just lets them take abaddon as well which is pretty much the only reason you play black legion Based on that, I'm gonna I'm hovering between C and D tier. I'm likely gonna put them in D tier. I'll I'll put them in D tier, but honestly, if there's an argument to be made that they could be pushed up to C tier. All right, last up we have Imperial Fists. Imperial Fists, I think, for the longest time have been the lowest rated Marine faction out of all of them i think they peaked for a very short time in eighth or ninth for like a week or two until they were dropped back down for the majority of the time that i've been playing competitive 40k they've all been rated as like they've all been rated as like the lowest uh, marine faction I, I think the only times that i've ever seen uh imperial fist being played is as either a successor chapter i remember people used to play them as a successor chapter with uh, was it Bolter Discipline and Master Artisans, or... It, it was something to that effect. Where, uh, that was only, the only time when you'd see Imperial Fist being played was as a successor chapter, and even then, it was it was pretty rare that you'd see that. The, the only time that you'd see actual Imperial Fist models was 9 times out of 10, they would just be playing, being played as Iron Hands half the time, or Ultramarines. I, I think for the most part, they were almost all relegated to, like, people who were extremely, like, passionate about the Imperial Fist would play them, but aside from that, they weren't really ever used, just because of how low down they were on the, like, tier list of, like, competitive units, but even then... I can't quite remember if anyone really ever used them effectively prior to 10th. In 10th, they have come up a little bit, but I still wouldn't say that they're, like, the best marine faction in 10th. Even their, like, unique units in a one, around ones like, um, what was it, uh, Tor Garadon, aren't particularly good when you compare them to other, like, similar uh, leaders like that, like Kalgar or Tigarius or Mephiston or Kosara Khan or... Uh, Azrael or anything like that. They just sort of seem like they've always just been relegated to the like end of any marine faction list. In addition, I just don't find their like color scheme that appealing. The yellow is doesn't really look good. Plus, it's an extremely hard color to paint. Now, there are some people who do grim dark imperial fists that can look amazing because of the contrast between the dark browns and the lighter yellows. And Dawn himself as a character is actually pretty interesting. But I think just based on all that, I can't really put Imperial Fists anywhere else but D. They've pretty much always just been low tier in terms of Marines. Now, there are going to be some diehard Imperial Fist fans who are going to probably mail me a pipe bomb after this video. But in all honesty, that's where they belong in D tier. And with that, we've covered all the Space Marine Legions. I'm sure there's some people who have very strong opinions in opposition of what I've said. Feel free to call me a gormless idiot in the comments section, that's why that exists. I'd likewise be open to hearing what people think about the competitive ranking of these lists, since, like I said, my experience is limited only to the UK and Australian scene. But aside from that, I hope you found something interesting about this video, and if there's nothing else, have a great rest of your day.